And we're back. This is One Rep at a Time Radio on the Recovery Channel app. All right, this is going to be episode five. I'm your host, Marv. Once again, this is One Rep at a Time Radio on the Recovery Channel app, brought to you by OneRepAtATime.net, fitness to recovery mindset. Today, we are going to talk about mindset, motivation, hell, even a little bit of mental health, and um, just the various mindsets that are out there, um, things that I feel that go into those mindsets, how to apply a healthier mindset to fitness and working out and our recovery, and some deep-rooted issues as well that I work through. Uh, before we get started... Just like we're going to do every single episode, though, I'm going to take this time, kind of do a little meditation by saying my own version of the third step prayer. Now, when it comes to recovery, like it comes to fitness, there are many paths at the same top of the hill. Just because 12-step fellowships work for me doesn't mean that that has to be your route to recovery. I just know that works for me personally, and so since this is my show, I am going to say my own version of the third step prayer. Um, that I wrote myself that was a recommendation to me in treatment when I was having a real big problem with the whole higher power God thing. So I want to take a moment, breathe this out loud, center myself, and then we'll dive into today's topic. So, God, take my will in my life. Relieve me of my fear and insecurity and replace it with self-love and acceptance. Instill in me the principle of non-judgment towards myself, ever reminding me to be gentle on myself. Allow me the courage, the drive, and the focus to do today what needs to be done, to walk through what I need to walk through. May life radiate through my eyes, not the clouds of depression. May my actions bear witness to you, fulfilling your expectations, and not those of me or others. May I do your will always, clean, sober, and free. Amen. All right, so, mindset. What the hell does that mean? Well, mindset, in my opinion, is pretty much how you view the world, um, do you look at it half empty, half full? How do you look at your circumstances? Are you pessimistic? Are you optimistic? Whatever. Um, what's kind of odd with me is personally over the years, I noticed that when it was my turn to give advice to other people, I was very pessimistic. I mean, I'm sorry. I was very optimistic. I was very positive, uplifting, encouraging. But when it came to giving advice to myself or how I viewed myself, I was very pessimistic. I was very negative. So if anybody asked me about their situation, I was always the grass is fantastic on your side the cup is half full you're gonna slay it you know you hear that those are sleigh bells because you're killing it you know um with me it was the grass is always greener on the other side i would never be happy i would self-sabotage the cup is always half empty and all that crap so that was something i noticed at a very not young but i'd say about high school i started to notice that i didn't really know what that was about um, but it was something I noticed and it would get progressively worse and um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But when it comes to mindset, right, there's this the there's this um, avenue of mindset, you know, there's a whole genre of mindset stuff of two mindsets that either we follow a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. So hopefully you've heard of that. If not, let me explain. Uh, this is from pretty smart people coming up with these two categories. So a fixed mindset is when people think that their basic qualities and traits are fixed, so they cannot change it. So they feel that talent alone creates success. Effort doesn't make a difference. So it's like, why even bother? Um, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good looking enough. Um, I'm not whatever, you know. It does no good, right? Everything is carved in stone. What you get when you're born with will never change, so why put the effort in? So they're, they're very negative. They focus on the failures as as signs that this is what I was always meant to be. I'm never going to get better. It is what it is. Um, you know, life is just shit. You know, whatever I get is what I get. It's I wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the cards for me. Whatever you hear, stuff like that. That's what a fixed mindset is. So, so those people tech typically are that pessimistic person that I viewed myself with. So I was a fixed mindset with myself, and I was a growth mindset with others. So there was a fixed mindset again, negative. Everything's carved and sewn. You focus on your failures. Um, it's all about talent. Effort doesn't make it. You can't change. So what's the point? On the opposite end of the spectrum is the growth mindset. So those are people who feel that, you know, the qualities and the traits, you know, basic human qualities, basic human traits can be cultivated and changed with hard work and effort, right? So 
Um, if things aren't carved in stone, you could actually improve upon them. You know, um, they tend to be more folk positive, and they and they focus on the challenges and potential, and they actually embrace challenges. So the fixed person focuses on all their failures as as signs as why they're never going to be good as you know. Um, they're very negative. Growth, on the other hand, they don't. They don't even give up with failures, right? A failure is just another obstacle, it's another challenge. It's, it's they, you know what? I figured out that that way doesn't work for that problem. You know, they're they're very um, driven and are feel that the effort, if they put in enough effort, that they could accomplish anything. So, I mean, there's this whole psychology element of what how you gain one mindset or the other it has to do with your upbringing, um, your environment, whatever, but. In my opinion, you know, what feeds these two mindsets, and this is just my opinion, is uh, it, it's our self-talk, right? Our self-talk, like our mindset, is how we view the world. And so self-talk, I mean, like, how do you talk to yourself? Um, what is that voice in your head saying that you don't tell anybody, right? Now, I would always call that the voice of addiction because my self-talk, when left to my own devices, is absolutely brutal, negative, pessimistic, Debbie Downer, play the victim, fixed mindset to the core it's horrific um and our self-talk i really really feel is how we view the world right one the same exact situation can happen to two people if somebody has negative self-talk again they're going to be that fixed mindset they're going to focus on the negatives the debbie downer you know if somebody has positive self-talk you know, they brace obstacles, they brace challenges, they think that they can improve their situation, they're going to have a much better experience, at, you know, at that same situation, right? So, same exact experience, one person has a negative experience, other person has a positive experience, and that's how important that is. So, an example of just the power of self-talk is, um, growing up, I tried to play sports, <laughs> try was the key word, I, uh, I was small and unathletic compared to my peers. I didn't really grow into my body till I was 18, 19, and all of a sudden I was like, well, damn, now I'm like athletic and and strong and powerful and quick and agile and, and you know, once high school's over, all of a sudden the old high school friends who would just, you know, run circles around me, now I'm doing the same on them. Man, this is, this is unfair. This is too late. But anyways, in middle school, right, I, I tried – playing basketball in middle school and, and I was always good enough to make the team but I, I rode the bench I was a bench warmer right I would wear those breakaway pants without ever having a reason to break them away so they were just pants um, and and in practice right I just kept messing up a, a, a drill right we're weaving down the court on a fast break I kept messing it up and the coach got me a little bit and I get back to the line and, and I quietly muttered to myself I suck two little words I suck and the emotional response I got was I almost started choking on my tears. I had to step outside to calm myself down. So in two words, I gave myself like a panic attack or mental breakdown. And that just shows the power of self-talk, you know. Um, they've actually shown people who are very negative in their head, you know, they, you could actually change hormone levels in your body. You could actually increase the amount of stress you feel. And your body's reaction to stress is to release this hormone called cortisol. Okay, cortisol is what we consider catabolic, meaning it breaks tissue down. So catabolic is the opposite of anabolic. So something that's anabolic, um, those type of hormones build our body up. Catabolic hormones such as cortisol, which is a stress hormone, break our body down. So you could actually significantly impact your, your physical health with your self-talk, especially if it's negative, you know, and the example I give, right, is that basketball, right? I went to absolute, I mean, excuse my language, but shit, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a middle school, right? There's no need for me to do that. And instead of having fun, you know, and hanging out with my peers and trying to do my best, you know, I just start beating myself up. And self-talk is a very, very, very powerful thing, you know. And I feel that how we speak to ourselves you know, kind of leads to whether or not we assign morality to trivial things. And I've gone about this before in previous episodes. And um, but what I mean by assigning morality is we we use some some superficial thing, some outside source to identify a bit with and classify ourselves as either good or evil, bad or good, positive or negative. Um, for me, I'm very open, right? I'm a dude, obviously, and I suffered with severe 
body image issues, muscle dysmorphia, if you want to be specific, um, for years and years and years. So I would assign my morality of whether I was a good or evil person, whether I was righteous or evil, you know, I would, the value of my soul, listen to that, the value of my soul depended upon whether or not I had a good workout, which in my workouts, I had to crush every single one. If I didn't set PRs, which means personal records for working out with weights or lift hundreds of pounds or do whatever, you know, I was evil. If my body wasn't perfect because I was striving for the perfect human body, um, wasn't up to my standards, I was evil. And since I was drinking and drugging on a daily basis on top of a bunch of steroids and athletic drugs and not really knowing what I was doing, I didn't really know the basics of nutrition yet. I got all my information out of those muscle comics, a.k.a. muscle magazines, and, and would take 30 to 40 supplements in this given day. Yes, 3040. 0, 0, 30 to 40 different supplements, thinking that would fill the void inside of me to make myself be perfect. Um, I was evil. And then also what I ate, right? If I didn't eat clean... I was evil, you know, I failed, I failed as a human being, my soul was wretched because of those things, so self-talk, I really, really strongly believe is tied into, do we assign our morality to nonsense, pretty much is what that is, to trivial stuff, um, when I have negative self-talk, I can start to assign my morality, my old body image issues could start to come back, my insecurities could start to come back, um, I become a negative Nancy, a Debbie Downer, you know, I play the victim, right? My my go-to MO, my go-to mentality, my go-to mi mindset is that fixed mindset where I play the victim, you know? And, and I learned um, in my recovery that I played the victim for, shoot, 27, 28 years of my life because it's not like I got clean and sober and all of a sudden everything was fixed mentally for me and emotionally for me. But I play the victim because when I feel sorry for myself, I then feel entitled to do whatever the hell I have to do to make myself feel better. And... Because I was raised in such a leave it to beaver family, deep down my conscience knew that what I was doing was not okay. Um, even though I rebelled against some of the things, um, it was definitely a situation though where I needed to quiet my conscience. And that led me to do worse and worse stuff, which then left me to feel more and more sorry for myself. So it was that vicious cycle. Um, so. Do not sign morality yourself. Again, self-talk matters. I ask people this, and, and this is for me as well. Would you talk to your friends the way you talk to yourself? And not like the the conversations that we, we vocalize that we have with ourselves, but you know those, the dirty little secrets and, and digs and, and beating ourselves up that we do. You know, We wouldn't have any friends if we talked to them the way we talk to ourselves. At least for in my situation. If left to my own devices... I would have zero friends on the face of the earth if I talked to them the way I talk to myself. You know, so what I learned actually, what helped me a lot was instead of just listening to that voice, which I would call the voice of addiction, um, because I had that voice long before I ever picked up a drink or a drug. And again, you listen to this show, being in recovery and getting over addiction, that addiction doesn't have to be just drugs and alcohol. It could be sex, gambling, food, whatever. I don't care. Okay, addiction is addiction. It takes many forms, and whatever we're addicted to, that's but a symptom of something far deeper, in my opinion. So long before I ever had the the, the alcohol or the drugs, um, I had something going on, and I would call that the voice of addiction, right? And if I, if I don't vocalize that voice of addiction, like I hear it and I start to believe it. But what I found is if I actually said out loud my self talk, if I could actually hear myself talk, like not just hear the voice in my head, but hear it with my own ears, like there was times where I almost would start bust up laughing at how flipping ridiculous it was. You know? It was weird. It was almost like when I was playing basketball where my initial response was I would feel like tears welling up in my eyes and then I would like think about what I had just told myself and I would almost start laughing at just how preposterous it was. Like, why am I beating myself up to death over some silly little thing? Like, I don't know. Let's just keep, stick with food, right? Because when you, when you get fit, you need to eat smart is one of the terms I like to use. Um, but let's just say, you know, I'm weighing my food and, and I miss my, my numbers for that day, right? Um, 
why am I thinking that I'm an evil person and I get a knot in my stomach that I failed? I failed as a human being. Are you kidding me? You know, and then it's the negative, oh, you're no good, you're a wasty, you're never going to be in this shape, or, or how dare you try to tell other people how to get in shape when you can't do it yourself. You know, this ridiculous crap like that. Um, and so saying it out loud really, really helped. Um, one thing that's interesting, at least, and this is a little bit of my story, and, and hopefully you get something out of this, is um, the fear of failure or the fear of success. Now, I thought I was like most people who was afraid with failure, okay? And that was like the fixed mindset. Um, it's not going to do me any good to take a chance because if I fail, then my ego is going to take a hit. Um, it's not going to pan out anyway um, because there's, you know, I don't have the talent or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, but fear of failure or, or fear of success. So I just, I would always say I'm afraid of failure. Well, I almost kind of wish that was the case because, because yeah, there's times where I didn't take a chance, um, and get out of my comfort zone. But for the most part, like, you know, I, I did what I did, but what I was actually afraid of was something far sinister. It was, I was afraid of success. Okay. And, and being afraid of success actually prohibited me prevented me from having that growth mindset, you know, cause I, as a kid, I'm pretty sure I had the growth mindset and then somewhere along the way I, I changed to that fixed mindset, you know? Um, and, and I think that also ties into when I started using drugs and alcohol, when I started playing the victim more and more, um, you know, and, and if I, if I think that, Oh, I can't improve my situation with a lot of hard work and effort, then of course that make, allows me to play the victim. So once the, the victim mentality really took over, which was probably my early teenage years. I had it as a kid, but it, it t completely took over. Probably 11, 10, 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there. Um, and I lost that ability to think that I can improve my situation. So I was afraid of success. And what do I mean by that is, why was I afraid of success? Now, this is just for me. I know I've spoken with a lot of people who have the same situation, right? And they don't know why. This is just my story. Hope you can get something out of it. Again, my name is Marv. Listen to One Rep at a Time Radio on the Recovery Channel app. Uh, this show is brought to you by One Rep at a Time dot net. Um, but why was I afraid of success? Well, I, even as a kid, I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. I had no intrinsic identity, which means no internal identity, right? I always use something or someone to identify myself by. I had, therefore I had no self-esteem and no self-worth. Well, because I had no self-esteem on a subconscious level, which is the power of mindset is, uh, I would not allow myself to have anything positive because I didn't think I was worth it. I didn't think I deserved it. So I would self-sabotage. Like I'm that farmer at that farmer's market, right? I'm the first one in line to the farmer's market. I get the most primo spot on the entire lot and I set to work. I set to work polishing my apples. I set to work making my little display perf perfect. You know, every blemish is hitting every perfect side of the apples facing outwards in a perfect triangle. I'm set to make a killing for that day. You know, I work my tail off, right? I'm about to take over the world. I'm about to win. I'm about to win at life. You know, watch me win. But what do I do? I step back. I take a look at that cart that I just spent the last three to four hours working on in the last four hours standing in line, even though nobody got there until right before. But I still stood in line because, um, you know, I'm a perfectionist. Um, and I kick the damn wheels from out underneath my cart every single time, setting the wheel, the wheels flying from underneath it so the apples are going every which way. That's what I would do. So because I was afraid of success, because I had no eternal identity, which meant I had no self-esteem or self-worth, um, I wouldn't allow myself to have anything good. So whenever shit started to look like it was on the upswing and that I was going to take over the world, I would self-sabotage job, finances, relationships, friendships. Um, personal circumstances, whatever you want to call it, right? Ad infinitum, whatever you want to throw in there, that's what I did. And again, I had negative self-talk, which contributed to the fact that I let played that victim with the fixed mindset and that contributed to my low self-esteem, my low self-worth. Um, I hated myself, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Um, self-loathing, self-hatred, um, I didn't know who the hell I was. I would just fantasize about being somebody different, anybody but me. Um, I need damn validation from anybody, good, bad, or indifferent. Just recognize me, right? Say something about me. 
Um, I need validation because I just I am so uncomfortable in my own skin. It was just so negative. Okay, um, that's just my story, right? I wasn't afraid of failure. I was afraid of success. It was easy to say I was afraid of failure because saying you're afraid of success is is like a deeper issue in my opinion. That's just me. Now, if you're afraid of failure, I totally get it, right? But I'm just talking about my own personal story. Fear of success, like just meant I would I would self sabotage every single little thing, right? The only thing good I accomplished during the time that I was running off that self sabotage, that self loathing was was earning my college degree. Um, outside of that, everything I sabotaged: romantic relationships, friendships, finances, um, circumstances, living situations, jobs, whatever. You know, I was always the grass is always greener. Uh, whatever I don't have, I want. As soon as I get it. Well, I wish I had what I had before, you know, like I'm jumping from one side of that damn fence, get to the other side and realize, you know what? It was greener on the other side. Well, it's too late. You already burned all the bridges, right? So that was me. So again, but let, let's get back on topic. What the hell does this have to do with fitness? Right? I'm sure you've been like, Marv, where are you going with this? I thought the show was about fitness and recovery. Um, self-talk when it comes to getting fit and healthy Make, makes a lot of difference. It it self talk is gonna kind of determine. Do you enjoy the process? Because remember, getting fit, getting healthy, like recovery, is a journey, not a destination. And we're always so worried about the destination, right? I can't tell you how many when I start with clients because I am a private personal trainer, um, both online and in person. When am I going to look like this? And they give me some unrealistic person, or when am I going to put on twenty pounds of muscle? And it's like, look, let's. Let's take one thing at a time, right? It's a journey. It's a process. Um, there are over no overnight fixes, okay? There isn't. Any overnight fix is, is going to come back to bite you in the ass later. Um, that's the whole principle of like a crash dieter, right? So, or the yo-yo dieter. So people who, right, they, you could, they could crash diet, which means they're eating very, very little calories. You know, they're doing like that 48-hour Hollywood cleanse where you just drink some liquid for 48 hours, you know, but they'll they'll do it for an extended period of time. They lose all this weight, man. Super unhealthy. They're exercising a ton, um, losing a bunch of weight really, really fast. Well, you're not gonna be able to keep that up. You're you're starving yourself essentially. Um, and yeah, you can lose that weight, but you're gonna gain it all back if not more, right? That's the whole thing. They're so worried about the destination. They're not taking their time with with the the journey and taking their time with the process they're not enjoying the process because because when it comes to self-talk and the journey and the destination you know it comes down to what are your expectations you know how are you setting your expectations because remember expectations are just resentment and training um when i heard that the first time that blew my flipping mind expectations are resentment and training and it's so true so true um you need to have realistic expectations. Um, now, how do you set realistic expectations? Well, you're going to have to find it, something realistic to follow. So don't fall for late night infomercials. Anything that promises you a ton of results really fast with little to no effort, I'm just going to say right now is garbage. Run far, far away from it. Um, so when it comes to tempering expectations, keeping our self-talk positive, enjoying the process, setting goals um, actually has a lot to do with that. Um, setting goals are not setting goals. You know, studies have found um, if you write down a goal, it increases the odds that you're actually going to reach those goals by 75 percent. 75 percent increase you will reach those goals if you actually write them down. Why? When we, because I did this as a kid, right? I would fantasize and tell people my my great plans, right? My delusions of grandeur. You know, the famous, I'll get clean tomorrow. I'm going to make a million dollars next year. I'm going to, you know, learn to diet correctly and get a six pack next year. I'm going to, you know, bat 500 in my sober baseball league or sober, sober softball league and, and crush, you know, 50 home runs or what, you know, add whatever you want to do. You know, the second that you vocalize that and just say that you're going to do something, it, it affects, it, it does something in the brain where it almost gives you a little dopamine release, which is the feel good chemical that drugs give us that makes you feel like you already accomplished it. So by just literally talking about it, you, it takes some of the, the motivation out of it. It's, it's a weird thing, right? So the, the studies are, are pretty, pretty crazy. So 
setting goals or not setting goals, you need to set a goal. But don't just set a goal. Don't just tell people what you're going to do. Write it down. Physically write it down and do it. So how do you write your goals? Well, this is how I recommend to do it. Um, and I actually got this out of a book. But there's six categories on a single piece of paper. And you're going to want to keep this pe paper handy. Um, so I recommend putting it on your bathroom mirror if, if that's possible. Um, first off, the goal. Right? My goal is what? What is your goal? Be specific, okay? So if you want to lose weight, how much do you want to lose? If you want to get stronger in a specific lift, how much stronger? Or do you, if you, you want to add a certain amount of muscle, how much muscle? Again, just be realistic. But part two, okay, section two is the date, okay? The exact date of when you begin and when you hope to complete the goal. Now, this could be adjusted in the future if necessary, but make every effort to be realistic and, and stay motivated to, to fulfill your goal in that time frame. So do your best to be accurate on it. You know, don't do some exaggerated, I want to lose 30 pounds in two weeks. You're not going to keep it off. Be realistic. Okay. Now the third part on that piece of paper is the obstacles, you know, so my recommendation is keep the list short, but accurate. So three or less. Um, again, it's kind of like that self-talk. If you write out 20 obstacles to reaching your goal, the odds are you're going to totally psych yourself out. You're going to feel overwhelmed and helpless, and you're not going to get started because we'll look at all the things preventing me from doing so. Um, that's just my opinion. But again, I think self-talk matters. Just like seeing negative obstacles you're going to have to, to hurdle to reach your goal. Just keep it short, but keep it to the top three. Um, next on the piece of paper, action steps. Basically, what the hell are you going to do to make that goal a reality? Just like when setting the goal, the more specific, the better. This is the perfect time to outline your plan of attack. So don't just write exercise and eat better. You know, be specific. I'm going to lift weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to go for a walk for 30 minutes every Saturday and Sunday. I'm only going to eat fast food two or, two or less times per week. I'm going to give up soda and I'm going to give up energy drinks. And I'm going to do my best to eat, you know, a certain amount of protein if, if you're tracking your food, which I strongly recommend you do um, just to learn per portion control. But, you know, something specific like that, you know, not just exercise and eat better. Well, that's so vague. You could kind of convince yourself at the end of the day, well, I walked a lot of work today or I'll do it tomorrow. But if you say, OK, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will lift weights in the gym every Saturday and Sunday. I have to go for a walk and do some cardio. I can only eat fast food twice a week tops preferably less i'm going to shoot for less but you know what i'm going to i'm going to recognize that this is not a destination it's a journey it's progress not perfection let's be realistic because right now i'm eating fast food two times a day let's cut it to two times a week um, i'm going to quit drinking energy drinks and soda and, and i'm going to aim for a certain amount of protein every day even if that means just now i'm going to start drinking a protein shake after every, before before every time i work out with weight so just every, off topic everybody Fasted cardio, meaning you either woke up and did it, did your cardio, or you haven't eaten for four hours. Fasted cardio is fine. This is off topic, but just bear with me. Fasted cardio is fine, right? Um, there is no difference in a 24-hour time period of if you burn more body fat or not. So if you, if you do your cardio fasted, you'll burn more body fat, yes, during that exercise, but your, your fat metabolism will slow down the remainder of the day. If you do your cardio fed, meaning you wake up and you eat before you do your cardio, or you just ate a meal about an hour before you do your cardio, um, you'll burn less fat during the actual exercise, but you'll burn more fat later on throughout the day. So do whatever works for you for cardio. But when it comes to weight training, we want you to do it fed. We never want you to do weight training fasted. So that means, yes, you would eat, drink your protein shake before you work out, potentially after two. But if you're going to choose one or two, either before or after, always do before, especially if you haven't eaten or especially if you're lifting weights first thing in the morning. So there's that tangent. But again, if we hadn't gone into the specifics of what action steps you're going to take to make your, your goal a reality, like we wouldn't have gone down that tangent. So see how important it is seeing it on paper, seeing a plan of action, specific steps, specific actionable steps will help us come up with that. Okay. Now the next part you're going to leave, you, it might actually be better to get like a notebook or a couple other pieces of paper and not have this on the main piece of paper because that's going to be a review. So that's going to be like an open log of you to review your progress. Okay. 
I would perform that about probably once a week. If you need to do it every day in the beginning because it, it keeps you motivated and, and fresh and, and just up to date and keeps that, that you know, the, the snowball rolling down that hill, then go for it. But at least probably once a week review it. Um, and a lot of people want to skip this step, right? They don't want to see where their shortcomings or whatever, but don't skip it, okay? It's a way to analyze your strengths and shortcomings when it comes to reaching your goal. It allows you to make adjustments sooner than later. It also allows you to give yourself a pat on the back for doing those actionable steps, okay? You know what? And it keeps it keeps your expectations in check and it keeps that, that self-talk, you know, at least balanced because it could be like this. Well, I ate fast food four times this week, so I failed at that. Okay, so boo. But, you know, I I just had a diet soda once. The rest of the time I got water with it. I didn't have any energy drinks. And, and I actually, I lifted weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I did cardio one of those days. So, yeah, I didn't reach all my specific goals into making that overall goal of losing a certain amount of weight. But I could see where I did. You know, well, I set myself up for success Monday, Wednesday, Friday because I went to the gym right after work. Saturday, I went for a walk first thing in the morning. Sunday, I said, you know, I'll do it later, and I kept putting it off and putting it off and never got to it. So what can I do different? Okay, now I ate fast food four times because two times this week, um, I didn't pack my lunch for work. So I got really hungry. I freaked out. You know, I got the heebie-jeebies of just being really, really hungry, and I said, screw it, I'm going to eat it, you know. Um, but again, if you're not doing that review, you can't write down, well, this is what led to my success. This is what led to my shortcomings. And again, don't think of them as, or think of them as strengths and shortcomings, not successes and failures. Again, that's that self-talk. That's that connotation, right? So doing so will help you stay in that growth mindset of, well, if I just keep putting in the work, I'm not fixed. I'm not doomed to being a pear shape my whole life. I'm not doomed to being 110 pounds soaking wet. I'm not doomed to being so out of shape I can't keep up with my grandkids or my kids even walking through the parking lot to the mall. You know, whatever whatever you're going to do. Do the review. And then last, um, on that piece of paper that you're going to put up, what preferably on your bathroom mirror, is put a section of a reward. Set an appropriate reward in advance for your accomplishments. And that could be part of the weekly review or it could be reaching your goal overall. Now, appropriate is the key word. If you're working on weight loss, don't celebrate you losing the five to 10 pounds that you set out to lose that month by going on a three-day binge at a binge at a all-you-can-eat buffet. You know, just keep it appropriate, but do something right because you're you're accomplishing something that you never thought you could accomplish before. Probably um, that'll keep you a lot more engaged and happy and, and enjoying the process okay um so that's what i recommend for that now after you set your goals though or the one goal whatever it's going to be and you write that out let's even go bigger picture let's take a, an even further step back from just writing down your goals like i've mentioned in other episodes um I want you to define your fitness. Write it out. What does fitness mean to you? What does physical health mean to you? What are you looking to become? Because everybody's definition of fitness is going to be different and unique. That's what makes us all unique individuals. Just like everybody's definition of recovery is different. Um, yeah, there's some same common principles and commonalities throughout, but everybody is pro- most likely has a little bit definition of recovery. Um, my fitness right because I have a, a history with bodybuilding like is going to be way different than somebody who just wants to lose 10 pounds look a little bit better naked and not be winded when they go on hikes for friends or be able to keep up with their kids you know or if somebody's sports specific or, or whatever or you want to do yoga or you want to do a half marathon or even a 5k or hell even just walk up a flight of stairs without feeling like you're going to have a heart attack because you're so out of shape and so overweight and you're diabetic and high cholesterol blood pressure whatever Um, Define what your fitness is going to be. That's really important. Just like I would recommend you define what you want your recovery to be. Um, Define what your fitness to be. Then, I want you to define why you want that type of fitness or why you have a specific goal. Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to get in better shape? Um, Why do you want to get your blood pressure down? Why do you want to get cholesterol down? You know, the more... The more specific you can give a reason, the the better your odds are of it of of reaching those goals, you know. Um, and remember, and if you can't come up with anything right, if you don't can't come up with any like real reason, think of it this way: getting fit 
and working on your physical health and your recovery from any sort of addiction can be a direct amends to yourself. Okay, I'm going to say that time and time again. I'll probably say that every single episode of, of this, this radio show, uh, which is One Rep at a Time Radio on the Recovery Channel app, brought to you by OneRepAtATime.net. My name is Marv. I'm the host. Um, it's a direct amends to yourself. You owe yourself an amends because, yes, you dragged yourself through complete and utter torture while in the depths of your addiction. So... Yes, you owe an amends to yourself. And I had a hard time coming to grips with that because right, cause I was assigning my morality to stupid stuff. I was convinced I was the devil incarnate. I had that fixed mindset. I had the negative self-talk, um, the self-fulfilling prophecies, the self-sabotage. Remember, I had no self-esteem, no self-worth. I didn't deserve anything good. So I had a really hard time um, agreeing with that statement that I owed myself an amends. Right? I didn't put myself on my amends list, um, which my sponsor eloquently pointed out. But... um. You owe yourself a direct amends, and getting fit and healthy is a fantastic way to do so. Because you're repairing the body that you beat to you-know-what while you're in your, your disease of addiction. So direct amends, man. It, it You owe it to yourself. Getting fit can definitely help it. And remember, getting fit um, or working on your physical health is, is a method of self-improvement, right? Um, I didn't quit drinking and drugging to become a piece of shit or have my quality of life get even worse, right? I want to improve myself. Um, remember addiction affects us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So we need to address our physical health. And, and when I feel good physically, I tend to be a little bit more stable emotionally. When my emotions are more stable, you know, mentally I'm able to handle situations better, which makes me ultimately more spiritual fit, spiritually fit. So it all goes hand in hand, right? This is a way to improve ourselves, to show ourselves some self-love, some self-care because we were not good at that. Okay. I was not good at that. I did not teach treat myself very well when I was in my addiction, when I was ripping and running and drinking and drugging daily. You know, I'd share the story that I'm studying kinesiology in in college, right, which is how the body works. And I'm studying exercise science specifically in in preparation of going to grad school to become a physical therapist and get my doctorate in physical therapy. And so I'm I'm learning how to repair and rebuild the human body. And I share this whenever I share my story. I vividly remember I have my, and this is going to be graphic, I have my bong, my bottle of pills, my glass of whiskey, my syringe of steroids. I put it all in my body. I ride my bike to campus and then I study exercise physiology in the lab and I was okay with that. That is not normal. That is not how normal people treat their bodies. Okay. So we did unspeakable acts. We sold our souls while in addiction to whatever it's going to be. It doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol, but we sold our souls to addiction. We put black spots on our souls for the actions that we did. Um, this is a way to give yourself a break and show yourself some self-love and work on improving yourself. Now, yes, we're making a direct amends. We're working on self-improvement. But again, there's pitfalls we need to be wary of. And I, and I can't state this say this enough. Remember, expectations are resentment and training, so we need to be realistic. Um, perfectionism is the purest form of self-abuse. I am a procrastinating perfectionist when left to my own devices without the program of recovery. That makes for a very, very difficult and challenging life because I'm going to put shit off, yet I expect to be 100%, if not more. It doesn't really work out very well for me. I'm not going to lie. I expect to be the best at everything, top of my class, yada, yada, yet I don't want to do work. Um, very, very difficult to do, right? That's that fixed mindset. Um, we're also primed for obsessiveness, you know, where our outsides can define our insides. Like I've always said, I had body image issues, muscle dysmorphia that happens. We're primed for new addiction. So these are all things that I talked about in last week's episode. Um, if you missed last week's episode of one rep at a time radio, you could actually go to the recovery channel, SoundCloud page, and you could find them uploaded after the fact. Um, hell we even, oops, sorry. I knocked my microphone over. <laughs> we even created a, uh, page on, the website one rep at a time dot net specifically for this radio show so you could see all the radios. You know, they'll be put up later, but hopefully you're listening to it live on the Recovery Channel app. But we talked about this last week with we're primed for new addiction. We need to be really careful with that. And the catch twenty two that when it comes to getting fit in our recovery and pitfalls. And and I'll just repeat that catch twenty two real quick. But again, if you missed last week's episode and, and it's more about the unique challenges we face when it comes to getting fit this week, right, is all mindset and how we frame stuff and view the world and my experience of that. But last week was specific about specific challenges for getting fit. But the catch-22 I'm talking about is 
we need to care enough to want to become fit. And again, everybody has their own definition of fitness, so it's important you define that first. So we need to care enough to want to get fit and therefore be willing to put in the hard work and discipline required to do so. But by the same token, we cannot allow fitness to replace our drug of choice or become the sole basis of our new identity. So we have to have a healthy relationship with fitness, one that comes from a place of self-love or empowerment or improvement, not self-hatred or punishment. So that's that catch-22. So it's always going to be a balancing act. With me, it's very, very fluid. I could, My body image issues could come back. Um, actually, I've been vocal about this um, with my work of... Uh, even though I've been going to more meetings I have in a long time, working with sponsees, I'm not just tooting my horn, but like I wasn't, I was of service. Okay, I was going to more meetings I have been in a long time, um, which which was silly of me to even drop off to only three a week. But I started going to more, um, and even despite that, my old body image issues started coming back because I've been dieting, trying to get you know abs to show that I know what I'm doing um, for my work, right? And, but I started feeling the vanity coming back, the body images coming back, the obsessiveness coming back. So I actually, I quit dieting, even though it's about to be summer here in San Diego, which is very, very, that was a hard decision for me to make. I wrestled with it for about a week. But that catch-22, right, it's fluid. Right now, it's not good for my mental health, my mental state of being, my self-talk, my mindset to try and be quote unquote shredded, right? Cause I could get down, not to my own horn, but like I could get down to 8% body fat, natural, no drugs. Um, I can get down lower if I'm on drugs, but that, obviously that's not an option. But that catch 22 is coming back. I was starting to become obsessive. I was starting to let my outsides define my insides. I'm not going back to that insanity. So I had to quit dieting. So I'm not dieting, which means I've put on some weight, but you know, I'd much rather do this and not be quote unquote shredded for summer, then have that insanity come back with the negative self talk, um, the neg the negative Nancy, the pessimism, the morality, all that. So again, that's kind of, that's kind of from last week's episode. So listen to that if you haven't. Now, again, I just want to go over the fact that everything is a skill. Okay, um, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And that ties into just consistency is the key. So, again, everything is a skill. Every exercise you do is a skill. Learning how to cook and prepare your own meals is a skill. Learning how to do portion controls is a skill. Hell, let's just get even more basic. Tying your shoes is a skill. Driving a car is a skill. Figuring out which bus to do is a skill. Anything you do at your work is a skill, right? It, it all takes time to learn. So progress is not perfection. It's going to take a lot of practice. And still, remember what I just said. Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Because consistency is more important than perfect adherence. Let's be real. Nobody's perfect, okay? We're not. I try to be perfect and I'm not. And I drive myself effing insane when I do so. But remembering that everything is a skill that there's going to be a time period where you're going to have to learn stuff you know it's self-improvement right nobody's good at everything from day one remembering all that allows us to be consistent so when we fall short right when we're doing that weekly review remember that example we reached three out of the five of our goals well we figured out what went well for those three goals we figured out what went bad for those other two goals and we could adapt on the fly um that's the key right when it comes to consistency, like think about it like this, like Bruce Lee, right? The Bruce Lee, the dragon. He, he famously said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. You know, same thing. Like consistency is what matters, not perfect adherence. It's not who could go zero to 100 miles an hour the quickest. It's who could last 100 miles. That's why that example of the, the crash dieter, the yo-yo dieter, yeah, they could lose all sorts of weight, but they're going to gain it all back, if not more you know within a couple months and they're actually going to put themselves in a worse situation than had they never lost the weight you know research shows if you yo-yo diet your weight goes up and down up and down up and down you're actually causing more harm to your body than had you just stayed heavy the whole time consistency is the key everything is a skill practice not progress not perfection hell practice not perfection right it all works that way again if you focus on that and be realistic set those expectations that you're not going to be good at everything from day one that you're not going to have 100 percent adherence you're going to be able to enjoy that journey you're not going to be so focused on the destination you know the journey is what makes everything worthwhile nothing in this life that's worth a damn is easier it comes with no effort and that is why it's so rewarding getting fit especially if you're in recovery 
you haven't worked on your fitness in a long time or ever, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of effort, discipline, sweat, sacrifice, right? You can't eat Krispy Kreme donuts and guzzle big gulp sodas and countless energy drinks, right? You just, you just can't if, if, you know, um, but doing all that makes it worthwhile. Absolutely makes it worthwhile. I guarantee you that if, it, if anything in this, if there's, if something doesn't require any work, it's not really gonna be rewarding because it was easy. It was given to you. Okay. I think of this, the road to success is always under construction. That means always going to have to work. So, okay, moving on. Again, this is One Rep at a Time Radio. This is episode five. We're on the Recovery Channel app. We're brought to you by one rep at a time.net. My name is Marv. I'm your host. Um, we're going to kind of move on to a little bit of like mindset, mental tricks, positive self talk tricks you could use for working out since we are primarily about blending fitness with our recovery from any sort of addiction. Um, and these are going to be kind of random, so just bear with me, but just implement them and see how you do um there's a couple things like say if you if you count reps right if you lift weights count your reps backwards so don't go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 go 15 14 13 12 11 you know just that little mental switch of the numbers getting smaller actually could will help you um because it seems more doable okay only a single client i've ever worked with for a very long time has asked me to count up everybody likes counting down it seems more applicable, more doable, you know, you're getting closer, not further away. You're not thinking about, holy crap, I've already done 12 reps and I have three more and I can barely move this way. It's, I only have three left. You know, that really helps. Um, or you can break, say you're, you're aiming to do 20 repetitions of an exercise. Instead of doing the 20, 19, 18, 7, you could break it down into sets of five. Here's my first set of five, five, four, three, two, one. Here's my second set of five, five, four, three, two, one. Personally, when I do high repetition work for legs, um, lifting heavy with legs, I'll do count sets of five, but I count upwards. So I go one, two, three, four, five, two, two, three, four, five, three, two, three, four, five, such and so on and so forth. You know, that, that can just make that set, that single set seem more doable, more, more possible, right? Little tricks like that. Um, what we you know say you're really struggling right and remember pain no pain no gain does not refer to pushing through injury it refers to something totally freaking different it does not mean you work you work out with an exercise that's specifically hurting a joint um there's a difference between muscle pain and being fatigued and having a burn from a quote-unquote pump and working the muscle really hard versus like i'm thrashing a joint that's already injured okay there's a huge difference but say it's like you're you know you're you're gassed, right? You're tired. You've been working out for 30 minutes. Um, you have a little bit more to go. What I like to tell myself or hell, even clients is, uh, tell you, you're not gonna remember this set a year from now. So you might as well do it now. Right? Just like it's even has to go with like mindset, right? Like I guarantee you what's today. Uh, May 3rd, May 3rd in 2016. I guarantee you I had the world's biggest problem. Holy crap. End of the world. My life will never be the same. It's a year later. I don't remember it. But I guarantee you, when left to my own devices, that's how I thought. For years, that's how I thought. Every single day was the the worst day of my life, was the biggest problem I've ever been given. Just, you know, I'm freaking pole vaulting over ant hills. That's what I did when I had that negative self-talk, that negative mindset, the fixed mindset, the signing morality, you know. So we could change that for whatever. Um, so just, again... The trick is, you're not going to remember this a year from now, I might as well do it now. You know, that allows you to push yourself, okay? Um, duh, we're going to talk about self-talk, right? So this is just my example. Today, when, I, when I'm when i really pushing it hard, and I do push hard, right? I do I do not work out pretty. Um, I work out pretty ugly. I'm grunting, groaning, red in the face, saliva, sweat dripping. Yuck. But anyways, uh, but when I talk to myself to get myself psyched up to do, it, to, do a set, um, I, I'd use talk and i'll say it out loud quite like we got this i got this time to go to work okay here we go let's do it um not what i used to do so when i was really bad into playing the victim and being negative and body image issues i would just curse at myself don't be a little b you f and p you 
PMF, you know, negative words, man, like just screaming at myself, screaming out loud, glaring at people. Um, it's a lot, I'm a lot better able to maintain some sort of spiritual serenity when I work out. That's why working out and exercising has become my favorite method of meditation in my recovery because I'm not doing stuff like that. I'm using that positive self-talk. I'm not beating myself up. I'm not talking down to myself. I'm not calling myself names. I'm not cursing at myself. I'm not setting unrealistic expectations or expecting perfectionism or pushing through and just being really stupid. Um, I'm being realistic, okay? Um, Now, what goes hand with that, which actually made a huge difference in my mindset, in my state, my mental state, of uh, of when I'm working out is the type of music I'm listening to. Personally, I feel this makes one of the biggest differences when it comes to your your emotional and spiritual state of mind, your mental state of mind, whatever. When you're working out, um, yeah, obviously, music, certain music pumps us up. But back in the day, right? I used to. Well, I have two examples. I'll go over for back in the day. Um, so I was 21, and uh, I have a very complicated relationship with women in my past, uh, which I had to do a lot of step work on. But um, I, I, uh, my first major relationship, she dumped me, and I went to hell in a handbasket, right? And uh, I got into triathlon shortly after. And so to cause self-inflicted pain to motivate myself, I would purposely listen to super depressing songs. I listened to like Hurt by Johnny Cash while training for a triathlon. Or a breakup song, you know, just to focus on that mental pain, that emotional pain to go. And that's why I was, you know, I kept me sick for a very long time. You know, I mean, it was bad, but like I did that. So that that's one end of the spectrum of just purposely listening to negative breakup songs. You know, Hurt by Johnny Cash, it's super slow. I would listen to that even lifting weights back then because I was just, oh, just the mental anguish, but it motivated me, right, to I'm going to show her, I'm not, but then it fed into that I'm not good enough, I don't deserve anything, right, that fear of success, that fear of failure, I'm, you know, I'm utter and equivocal garbage, why would I, anybody love me, why am I worth anything, why do I deserve success or happiness, you know, it would, it would feed that, it would feed that just negative mindset, okay, so I would do that, or uh, when I came to weight training, especially when I gave up triathlons, um, I gave up triathlons because my knees can't handle it. Um, after you've had three knee surgeries and, and ankle issues um, with multiple torn tendons, you just you just can't run. You can't run on a daily basis required to be able to be competitive. So I gave it up. I got into weight training. That's when I started using a bunch of steroids, um, which is fun because I'm have major implication health implications today i'm dealing with that but that's another topic again we kind of talked about that last episode so if you missed last week you could find it on the the recovery channel soundcloud page so just search that on soundcloud or there's even a page on our on one rep at a time dot net but um and then there's all the other shows for recovery channel too so please please support it out right this is an awesome platform a fantastic platform take advantage of everything it offers but um we're late and then i listen to angry music like Ramstein, Duhas, Disturbed, you know, what, uh, anything. And I would get so keyed up, so angry. Blood pressure, still spike. I'm glaring at people. Um, I'm literally snarling and growling, you know. Like, I grunt and groan now, but it's not like, you know, it's not just like evil. Like, it sounded evil coming out of my mouth. And um, you can't be spiritually serene. Sure, it'll pump you up to, to lift, quote, quote heavier intense or workout intense or, or run farther or whatever but it's not it's not like mentally or emotionally productive right we're trying to to let fitness and exercise become our go-to method of meditation it's not going to center us if we listen to crazy angry music it's not going to let us work through the frustration right we're going to hold on to it so um what do i listen to today more often times than not i listen to uh mixes on uh, youtube that pretty much go start with or the titles are like epic legendary intense battle heroic music battle music um or like the art the um the artist two steps from hell which i know it sounds negative but it's all like battle music you know from movies it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome it makes me feel like i'm saving the world it pumps me up but it doesn't get me angry right it gets me motivated doesn't get me angry if it, I feel like it inspires me, right? And it inspires me to remember, like, I'm doing this to improve myself, to to better myself. 
Um, I'm doing this out of self-love and self-care as a direct amends, not, oh, I'm so angry, I'm going to kill everybody, I'm going to rip your throat out, blah, 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 you know, so if that happens or not. Now, I'm not going to lie, like, there's there's this one specific group, oh, the music's terrible, but it's good for working out, maybe you've heard of them, Rob Bailey and the Hustle Standard. Now, that they cuss a bit on their music, but, um, and I listen to that occasionally, like on heavy leg day, but typically I listen to that, um... What's the word? Lyricless music that just really motivates me. So, but the music really makes a difference. If you find yourself listening to the angry, disturbed, duhas, whatever, corn, whatever, and it just, and you feel this angry after your workouts, you don't feel like you work through some frustration. Like, take a look at that. Okay, that made a huge difference for me. And then whenever I'm done, I, I stretch to a specific song. It's Hong and Lamore Flower Duet. It's pretty funny when you listen to it. It, it calms me down, especially if I'm listening to that Rob Bailey crap which it is but whatever um it helps calm me down and makes me stretch it makes me work on my area of complacency like an area of complacency and recovery my area of complacency and fitness is stretching and mobility work um and remember use the to for exercise and fitness to become meditation like you need to be present and mindful right use the time to center yourself work off your frustrations healthily don't let your mind race. Focus on each rep. That's why it's important to slow everything down. Squeeze the squeeze the reps if you lift weights. Um, be mindful of your breathing if you're running. Deep breaths when you're doing yoga. Wh- whatever the hell you're doing, you know. Remember, there's different definitions of fitness, so you're gonna do whatever, you know. Um, and I, I I've always joked that the uh, the gym is the reason why there isn't a pile of bodies in my past. Um, so I'm very grateful for my past, but I don't want to return to that insanity, that self-inflicted agony where I'm having somebody hold my shoulder into socket because it's wanting to pop out because I'm doing crap that I knew I shouldn't do. You know, that's not healthy, you know. Yeah, it's going to build your body. It's Well, it's also breaking down your body, but, you know, that could potentially build your body if you don't get hurt, but that's not going to help your mindset, right? We want emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical health. We want a balance in our recovery. So it's always going to be fluid, right? It's going to be changing. So just, just try these things out. Um, and then I'll, we'll end with this. We're not going to do a review this week because we're almost out of time. But if we do all these things and you're still having trouble with, with motivation for, for your, your fitness goals and, and, and your fitness goals and physical health goals, um, I have three options. So um, they're going from least extreme to most extreme. If you can find a bunch of people wanting to do it, you could create like a little pool, right? Like you're going to have to define the guidelines of it. Everybody puts in a certain amount of money. How are you going to measure results? You know, is it who missed the least amount of workouts, who lost the most amount of weight? But again, then that could kind of lead into that yo-yo dieting. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I would do um, some, some other measure. But get a pool of people. And figure out what the hell you're going to determine the winner by. And at the set period of time, whoever wins, they get all the money. Or they donate to a, to a, don- a charity of their, their, their choice. Whatever. Okay. The other thing you can do is like a fitness jar, like a swear jar. You know, you set, you write up everything. So like the, the example of remember that specific actionable steps. I'm going to lift weights three times a week. I'm going to eat fast food only twice a week. I'm not going to drink any soda. I'm not going to drink any energy drinks. And I'm going to do cardio on Saturday and Sunday. Well, you set up a payment schedule for if you miss that. So say you miss a workout, it's five bucks. Say if you know soda is a really big issue for you, five bucks. Say the fast food isn't that much of an issue for you, it's a dollar. You know, but put up a pay scale. Whenever you don't do that, you have to put money into a fitness jar. And then at the end of every month, you count up the, the total and then you donate it to a charity or whatever the hell you need to do. If you buy yourself something, then I guess. But, um, the goal is to get less and less money. So that's the one time donating to a chair you're trying to do less and less. Do that as a fitness jar, right? And then that's a way to track your results without having to go and analyze everything. Did I have less money than last time? But you got to be honest with it, you know. So that's the way to do it. And the most extreme is, uh, you might have heard this, is you post unflattering pictures of yourself in your underwear and you send it to a trustworthy person. And you send it with the goals. And if you don't reach your goals at that set period of time, they are allowed to post that on the internet. Obviously, be smart if you do this with who you send it to and how you take the pictures. Don't be naked. Um, don't be put yourself in a compromising position. But the challenge is not to just your body and the underwear, but your face too. That's the challenge. So that's more extreme. But you talk about motivation, right? When you want to give up, that's the way to do it. So um, again, this is one rep at a time. Radio. We're brought to you by one rep at a time. Dot net. Uh, fitness to recovery mindset is our slogan. 
Um, my name is Marv. I've been your host. We've been talking about mindset, um, tricks we could use, mental health, how to make fitness positive, self-talk, fear of success, fear of failure, um, my battle with self-esteem and body dysmorphia and whatever. So I hope you got some out of it. Um, it was it was more kind of over the board than usual, but um, I'm super grateful for this as always. Uh, please support the recovery channel any way you can obviously you're listening to this right now but for all of those listening on soundcloud please tune in live um, listen to the other shows give it some love share it on your favorite social media Um, together we grow and we alone can do this but we cannot do this alone so make fitness a part of your recovery process Um, it'll make for a much more well-rounded recovery process you are worth it i promise you that and as always have a blessed day